I just want to get something straight in my head before I start talking to you. Um, how many people here voted to leave the European Union? Are you satisfied with Mrs May's negotiations? Is there anybody that wants a second referendum? Well, now, what does Brexit mean? You see, I think it means exit. Brexit means exit! Brexit means exit! It means exit. It doesn't mean messing around and not leaving. Now, exactly two years ago, 17.4 million people, British people, voted to leave the European Union. This that was the single biggest democratic vote in our history. It was an historic victory for ordinary British people. And it will go down in the annals of our history, along with the other dates, where we remember where we fought and won our freedom from foreign oppression. The Spanish Armada, 1588. The Battle of Trafalgar, 1805. Waterloo, 1815. And Victory in Europe Day, 1945. 23rd of June 2016 will go down in the annals of history as your victory. The, co the combined forces of the establishment, the combined forces of the establishment waged a ferocious campaign of lies to deter the British people from taking their country back from the European Union. Project Fear, Project Fear was waged by most of our political establishment, most of our media, and by the international establishment. Even President Obama made a special trip here The good sense and patriotism of the British people prevailed and we voted to leave. But what has happened since? Mrs May did very little for a very long time and even now her withdrawal bill is not, uh, not finalised. And even when it is, it won't be the final word. The British government's withdrawal bill is entirely dependent upon the EU's withdrawal agreement. The withdrawal agreement has to be voted on by the European Parliament, and if it rejects it, we're back to square one. It will be like a game of political snakes and ladders. Mrs May is a Remainer. Most of the Commons are Remainers. Almost all of the House of Lords are Remainers. Putting them in control of Brexit was like asking a bunch of arsonists to put out a fire. The referendum was not an end in itself. The referendum was a very important battle in a long struggle. The struggle to free ourselves from the European Union. Now ever since the referendum, the establishment is doing all it can to delay and impede Brexit and all in the hope of reversing the referendum decision and making it not happen at all. That cannot be allowed to happen. They must not be allowed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. If our Prime Minister and government really wanted to leave the European Union, they would not ask the EU how it should be done, they would be telling them how it's going to be done. If we had a British government worthy of the name, this is what they would be doing. Forget Article 50, tear it up. Repeal the 1972 European Community Act. We should leave under our law, not their law. We should offer them tariff-free trade without the free movement of people. Or trade on world organisation terms, take it or leave it. 
we could offer a reciprocal deal for the rights of citizens, but only if the rights of British citizens on the continent are protected to the same extent that EU citizens' rights are protected here. Then our Parliament could set about repealing and amending EU legislation in accordance with our priorities and our timescales. Now what would that mean? It would mean no more money to the EU. No more laws imposed on us by the EU. And no more open borders. But that was never going to happen while both Houses of Parliament are infested with a nest of Quislings, traitors, collaborators and defeatists that sit there now. The great danger, the great danger facing us is that, that we will leave under a withdrawal agreement that actually means we leave in name but not in reality. Or that the whole process can be delayed long enough so that we don't actually leave at all. Now if you want things to change, then you have to change them. If you want to make sure that Brexit is not betrayed, then you have to organise politically. And that means joining a political party. The MPs in the House of Commons do not care how many people go on a march. It does not affect them. What affects them is their party losing votes. What affects them is their party losing influence and power. And what affects them the most, what they care about the most, is losing their seats. If you want to affect long-term change, then you have to join a political party, help fight elections and win power. Now, I'm a little bit prejudiced, of course, because I want you to join UKIP. But let me say... just some of the things that UKIP stands for. <laughs> Leaving the European Union completely and without impediments. Yes! Living under our laws made by our democratically elected yes! parliament and not being subject to foreign laws. Yes! Making laws in our national interests and in the interests of British citizens. Yes! Now UKIP wants to preserve our traditions and our culture for the future of our children and our grandchildren. UKIP wants to preserve free speech, democratic debate and the rights for our citizens to be themselves in their own land. And one last point. UKIP wants to end open borders and the age of mass uncontrolled immigration once and for all. The United Kingdom used to be a free, tolerant and peaceful place. UKIP wants to restore those values for the benefit of all the people that live in our country. But being tolerant does not mean you tolerate those things that would destroy you and your way of life. None of these things can be achieved until we leave the European Union and take back control of our country. Now I'd like to congratulate you all for coming out today and making a stand. Now take the next step and get involved politically. Make sure Brexit is not betrayed. Make sure that you, the British people, and your descendants are not betrayed. Yeah!